Provincial Capitals of China, Part 2. This video continues our alphabetical journey through China's provinces. In Part 2, we will introduce the capitals of six more provinces. Hainan, Hebei, Henan, Heilongjiang, Hubei, Hunan. Hainan is the southernmost Chinese province. It lies off the coast of Guangdong's Leizhou Peninsula. Formerly part of Guangdong, Hainan was separated in 1988, making it China's youngest province. As explained in Learning Chinese Provinces, the name Hainan is a simple combination of the words for sea and south. People in the West sometimes cling to an image of China as an underdeveloped land of peasants and rice fields. Rural China does remain a large and important aspect of China's identity and economy. But China is also rapidly developing into a modern land of big cities, advanced technology, and innovative engineering. If you keep up with news reports, you know that China has a very active space exploration program which has sent probes to Mars and the Moon. Why mention this now? In a geographic echo of the space launch facilities in America's southern state of Florida, one of China's launch centers is located on Hainan Island. Many people reach Hainan by plane or ship, but surprisingly, there is also a special train that links Hainan to Guangdong province. To accomplish this, when the train reaches the coast, railroad cars are loaded, passengers and all, on a special ferry that crosses the strait. After the arrival in Hainan, there is a high-speed rail line that circles the island. The capital, Haikou, is a port city at the northern coast of the island. It lies directly across the strait from Guangdong. The name of this city is a combination of the word for sea and a word that means mouth, sea mouth. This is similar to the English place name Portsmouth. Hainan's remote location in stormy weather made it a common destination of exile during the imperial period for officials who had angered the emperor. But a tomb just outside Haiko honors Hai Rue, whose career path ran in the opposite direction. He was born on Hainan Island during the Ming Dynasty and had to leave Hainan to then get in trouble with the emperor. After becoming an official, he was posted to various locations on the mainland. Hai Rue's ethical behavior made him popular, but his outspoken honesty put him into conflict with Emperor Jia Jing, who tried to punish him. Now let's move our focus to the province of Hebei. This name indicates its location north of the Yellow River. Notice that Beijing and Tianjin are nestled within Hebei, but are not part of the province. Hebei's capital is Shijiazhuang. Literally, the name means Shi family's village. However, some researchers contend that the first character of the city name was originally the word for ten, both of which are pronounced shi. Although the region was inhabited as far back as the Qin dynasty, the site of Shijiazhuang was a small town until recently. Shijiazhuang became the provincial capital in 1968 and is now a modern city. Moving south, we come to the province of Henan, meaning south of the Yellow River. Look at the map. We see that although most of the province is south of the river, it is only in the western part that the river forms the provincial border. In this case, the province name is used conceptually, but should not be taken too literally. 
Hunan's important role in Chinese history is evidenced by numerous historic sites. The capital of this province is Zhengzhou, an ancient city. This city served as a capital of the Shang Dynasty about 3,600 years ago. Remains of the ancient earthen city wall from that period are still evident. The first part of Zhengzhou is a reference to the state of Zheng, which was a political division of China almost 3,000 years ago during the Zhou dynasty. Zheng became a divisive flashpoint at the beginning of the spring and autumn period that led to the era of violent fragmentation known as the Warring States period. The second character of the city's name is the familiar Zhou that is a component of numerous place names that we have discussed in these videos. Modern Zhengzhou is the province's largest city and is rapidly expanding with gleaming high-rise buildings. China's seventh major supercomputer site was established here at the end of 2020. We will now jump to China's northeast to visit the province of Heilongjiang. We already learned that it gets its name from the Black Dragon River that separates China from Russia. Its capital city is Harbin. This name is another instance in which a word or phrase has been transliterated into Chinese from a different language. Harbin is a phonetic adaptation of the Manchu term for fishnet or the place for drying nets. Harbin is in the southern part of the province and is situated next to the Songhua River. The Far East Railway, constructed at the end of the 19th century, passes through Harbin. This rail link accelerated the commercial and industrial development of the city. The architecture of older sections of Harbin was influenced by immigrants from nearby Russia, and the city is sometimes referred to as the Oriental Moscow. Harbin is also famous for its ice and snow festival, featuring fanciful ice sculptures. Today, Harbin remains one of the most important cities in northeast China and it includes factories that manufacture aircraft and automobiles. Let's head back to central China and visit the province of Hubei. The name of this province combines the words for lake and north. Lake Dongting is a large, rambling, shallow lake. You can see its location on the map. The size of the lake grows and shrinks during the year due to seasonal spillover from the Yangtze River. The Han River is a major tributary that joins the Yangtze in Hubei province. Three major cities developed at the location where the two rivers meet, Wuchang, Hankou, and Hanyang. The cities grew in importance, and as they were immediately adjacent, people began to refer to the three with a single name, constructed using the first characters of their names, Wuhan. In 1927, they were formally merged into a single city. Today, it is the capital of Hubei province. The most distinctive historic building in Wuhan is Yellow Crane Tower. It was originally built as a watchtower for the Wu Kingdom more than 1,700 years ago. This was during the historic period known as the Three Kingdoms. The tower was destroyed and rebuilt a dozen times, never fading away with history. In a way, it symbolizes the city's resolve and determination to continue and thrive. The Yellow Crane Tower has been the subject of paintings and verse over the years. The Tang Dynasty poet Li Bai used it as the setting to write of a farewell to a close friend who had set off on a journey. A quick tip. 
In the West, we often pronounce the name of this city as Wuhan. But in Pinyin, the Chinese system of romanization, W-U is pronounced like the double O's in the English words Tu, Bu, or Gu, with no added W sound. The difference is a bit subtle. Listen. Wu. Wu. This pronunciation may seem odd, but the reason for this is actually quite logical. A future video will discuss some very interesting aspects of pinyin. Over the years, Wuhan developed into one of the most important cities in China. The Yangtze River gave life to Wuhan, but also acted as a barrier that split the city. In 1957, a double-decker bridge for railway and city traffic was built linking the Wuchang district with the rest of the city. This was the first permanent bridge over the lower reaches of China's longest river. In the West, we now focus on Wuhan as the initial epicenter of the COVID-19 virus pandemic. But it would be appropriate to acknowledge the success story of how the city overcame initial missteps and beat the virus. To address the public health disaster, Wuhan was locked down, and national resources were focused on the city and its immediate surroundings. Doctors, nurses, medical students, and other healthcare workers were rushed in from other parts of China. Using prefabricated modules, a 1,000-bed hospital was constructed in just 10 days. There was not yet any vaccine, so success depended on teamwork and determination. The lockdown was lifted 76 days after it began. Testing, tracking, and treatment are key factors in the continued health of the populace. As with the Yellow Crane Tower, disaster struck, but Wuhan recovered and rebuilt. South of Hubei, we come to Hunan province. Moviegoers might recognize the landscapes of Zhang Jiajie as the inspiration for the setting of Avatar. As you see on the map, Lake Dongting is in the northern part of this province. Hunan equals lake plus south, south of the lake. The capital city of Hunan is Changsha. As with many Chinese place names, there are disagreements about the source of the name. The literal translation is Long Sand, or Long Sandy Place. Some credit local river sandbars as the name's origin. Others cite a species of turtle sent by a local ruler to a Zhou dynasty king. Yet another theory links the city name to a celestial star called Changsha that is within the constellation called Chariot by the Chinese. Indeed, the city's nickname is Star City. Just remember Changsha. Accounts of the city reach back into China's prehistory, and its recorded history begins with the Zhou Dynasty. At various times, Changsha served as a regional capital. The Xiang River flows through the city as it heads north to discharge its water into Lake Dongting. Dominating an island in the middle of the river is a huge statue of Mao Zedong, the famous leader of the People's Republic of China. This statue is unique and quite unlike the Mao statues found in so many other Chinese cities. It depicts the head of a rather young Mao Zedong. Indeed, Mao was born in a village about 20 miles southwest of Changsha, and he spent his youth in the city. Here he participated in acts of rebellion against the dying Qing Empire, and later became a leader. This video has introduced the capitals of six provinces. Stay tuned and check out part 3, the next video of this series.